This is Modern Marketing. I'm John Davids from Influicity, and today my guest is Juliana Bevilacqua, CPG marketer extraordinaire with some great insights to share. Why don't you share your first insight and we'll take it from there. Okay, perfect. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be on the podcast today. My first insight is storytelling is going to be massive in the marketing industry and for brands moving forward. And what when you say storytelling, break that down. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so storytelling, being real with the consumers. I think that a lot of brands always try to have this polished look. We try to look perfect or the brands try to look perfect rather. And I think it's coming and being like super human, super real with the consumer and showing them the behind the scenes, showing them the story behind the brand, not just showing that polished product at the end. And if you'll allow me, I have a perfect example with Midday Squares. A Montreal based company for those who don't know, and they kind of make these like everything a, a protein bar wishes it was, and uh, everything a chocolate bar isn't essentially. And they're fantastic, I think they truly are pioneers in this storytelling, marketing, um, kind of new way to market a product. And the way they do it is by building a community and they show us the behind the scenes, they show us their wins, but they also show us their defeats. And that's something I think is really important because. It, it helps you connect to the consumer. It helps you connect to the to, to the people who you're marketing to. I mean, at the end of the day, we all wish we were right and, and good 100% of the time, but that's not the reality. And so seeing that a brand also has its defeats really helps you connect. It helps you feel for them. It, it brings that emotion into it. And when you have an emotion with a brand, you're connecting that brand affinity. And, and for me, that's that's super important. And so the second I saw Midday Square's first post, I was I was in, like I was a huge fan before I even tried the product. And then I tried the product and I was like, this is incredible. And with their storytelling, I feel like they're like superstars and they're like, I wanna help them and I wanna see them succeed. And I'm literally in stores and I go specifically to see where their product is and I'm fixing the product on the shelf. Like I'm making it look good. And I have, you know, nothing in this company. I'm not making a dollar by doing that, but I feel like I want to help my friends. And I feel like they are my friends based on their marketing strategy. I, I love that line you said, sharing your wins and your defeats. And so much of the time when it comes to branding, we want to share the best sides of us and only what works and only, you know, our, our best day, our highlight reel. But ultimately, if you think about it, think about it like a movie character. A movie character that is absolutely perfect is the most boring character <laughs> you can put totally. on screen, right? You need to show the flaws. You need to show the downside, the struggles, the challenges, the journey to get there. And that's what makes it interesting and relatable. And and when you take that to a brand, as you said, it makes it feel like it's your friend. It makes it feel like like you're in on the action. Uh, exactly. And, and I think that's a great example of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, can you give me, I'm looking at their website right now, and I'm, I'm noticing the copywriting is also really strong. Um, yes. so, some of the words they use, the imagery. Can you give some tactical examples of uh, maybe something you've seen with these guys or others? What would be an example of like a high point and a low point that a brand could use to, to tell their story? In terms of like the in terms of so you, you talked about wins and losses. So like we can all yes. think about wins. Well, what what's a loss? What's a version of how I would express my brand losing in some way? For example, so yeah, so for sure. So a couple of examples actually going back to mid discourse, just because I follow them so much, so I know a lot about about what they do. So we've seen where they've got sued a couple of times. And you know, by big brands that were saying that they, you know, were taking the same color as them for the packaging and all that kind of stuff. And Midday Squares actually ended up turning it into like a music video and bringing it out there and bringing it forward to their consumers and and you know, explaining a bit of the story and making it almost fun in a way. So they were talking about a serious issue. I mean, you're getting sued by these massive companies that have millions of dollars. And you're able to spin it into something where you create a song, you create a video and you turn it into marketing for you. And I thought that that was just fantastic. And they're so real, like they have their Instagram and their stories are often in like real time. And I've asked them like, hey, is this actually happening like live? Absolutely it is. And so you see the frustration of the founders and, and of the, the people working there, the, the employees, and then you see how they resolve the issue too. So I think that's important too. It's not just about, here's the defeat. It's then you really get to follow the story because now you're like on the cliff. You're like, okay, what's happening? What's happening? And then ultimately you want to see them win. And so then they come back and with all their wins and, and then it's positive again. 
it's almost like like watching a reality tv show it's, you're, that's you're, exactly you're, it. Absolutely. you're watching the journey take place and even if you know how it ends it's still fun to watch exactly absolutely and you feel like you're on that journey with them and that's what i think is so important and what i'd love to see more brands do moving forward i love that okay i know you had one more big insight to share with us sure so another insight that i have is that traditional marketing is not really focused on anymore i don't know about you but like when i'm on linkedin when i'm looking around i'm, I'm seeing a lot about social social digital seo search you know all that kind of stuff but i think there's still something to say about traditional media and when i talk about tra traditional media i'm talking about television i'm talking about radio billboards you know these are tried and true tactics and yeah okay they might be a little bit more expensive the cost per consumer might be a little more expensive but i think depending on the target consumer it's really important not to forget about these tactics that exist you know yes probably most of the most of the dollars or more of the percentage is going to shift towards digital and social tactics but i think it's really important to still keep a bucket of money for that traditional advertising because it's there for a reason and there's certain consumers that really will gravitate more towards those uh, advertising methods. I mean, if I think of uh, my grandfather who, who came off a boat from Italy, I mean, he is not on social media. You know, he's in his 80s and he's watching TV and he's driving his car and he's looking at a billboard. And so if you're targeting that kind of consumer, it's really important to continue with those traditional um, advertising methods. That's really smart. I was chatting with a CEO the, the other day at an e-commerce company uh, called Whisker. They sell uh, uh, pet products. And yeah. the CEO was telling me they grew the brand off a few things. So obviously, search engine optimization, it's an e-commerce D2C brand. Uh, they grew it off influencer marketing. And one of the really big things they did around COVID was they saw that TV dollars were, were uh, especially around the, around the news, the cable news channels, were getting cheaper and cheaper because there was more inventory. People didn't want to advertise next to pandemic and a divisive election. And so they went all in. They started buying up uh tv uh airtime and their brand exploded during that right. period they were able to do it yeah so leveraging television especially when you have certain certain shows certain um uh types of audiences you can reach there is a certain prestige factor that comes along with that and it, it's a lot of reach no you're not gonna you know reach but you know a hundred million people like you will on facebook in you know in a day however there's a prestige factor that comes with television and you're reaching a certain type of audience and it does move the needle absolutely a hundred percent totally agree with you do you think so how do you think as someone who manages a marketing budget how do you think about the balance um and i've, I've got a, i've got a question my second question there is how do you convince others on your team and your bosses who have to sign off but how do you think about okay we've got a bucket of money here how much goes to social and search etc it's actually really interesting and and i don't even know if i'll be able to properly answer this question because the way we're divided in the company is we have different marketing departments so my department is really focused on um, purchase. So anything, any tactic tied to purchase will go behind my budget. But when I'm talking about like traditional or social media, that actually goes to a whole other department that I don't get visibility on. However, I can tell you that for us, we do have part of our budget that goes in store and then another portion that goes digitally. Um, and the way we do the split is we look at what's necessary for in store. You know, that's we, we've got basics, for example, and there's no going, there's no going around them. We need to have certain aspects in our store. And so we'll carve out a budget for that. But we have seen in the more recent years, the digital buckets are really increasing. And as we're looking at the new capabilities, I mean, all the retailers, for example, are honing in on digital, right? There's a lot of things that we can do now that we couldn't even do a year ago, that we couldn't even do two years ago. And so naturally, because we're trying to test things, because we want to you know, stay top of mind with our consumers and be one of the first ones to try this new tactic with a retailer, for example, naturally our investment dollars in my department anyways, are going more and more towards those digital capabilities, but always carving in that portion for sure, uh, for in-store um, kind of POP materials that we call them uh, to make sure we're top of mind with the consumer there as well. Yeah. In terms of convincing um, other people on the team, I think it comes with data, right? So if we want to try something new, what's the data behind it? What's the reason? What are we going to cut to try this new thing? And is it worth taking that risk to try it? So I think it's really coming with that strong argument, the data and the reasons to believe as to, okay, we should try this or we should put more money here because of this, 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 this. Not, hey, it would be nice to just try this. Like, no, let's have a concrete reason behind the why.
And you've got to be able to separate your budget between what you know works, but also the R&D and the future proofing. Exactly. So if That's there right. is something that comes along where you say, you know what, this could work, it's not proven, but maybe it justified that we take a small percentage and try it out. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. I love what you said about storytelling and a couple more things there. I mean, we talked about copywriting. You also mentioned community um, and the idea about making people feel like they're bought in to this product. And it sounds like that's something that uh, that that this brand, Midday Squares, does really well. And then on the piece about, about legacy media, having a piece of your budget going towards these these um, platforms that are not necessarily just discussed all the time, but there definitely is an audience there. And depending on the kind of product you're selling, that's where you need to be. Absolutely. Exactly. Yep. Juliana, this was awesome. You dropped some gold today. People are going to love this. <laughs> this was awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity and it's been great chatting with you.